Son, where'd you find this? All right, welcome back. We're in the team today, and I'm going to do a little bit of a walkthrough. I've been getting asked a lot of questions about, uh, you know, just little mods I've done to the boat. I've had it for nearly three, three and a bit years now. So yeah, I've had a lot of time to play around, find out what works, what doesn't work. And um, yeah, I've done a lot of upgrading and, you know, tinkering with it since I've had it. So but yeah, to save running through all the uh, questions in text, I'm going to just basically give you a full rundown of what I've done to the boat. And to kick it off, one of the things I get asked about the most is the flooring. As you can see, I have done uh, EVA foam all the way around the gunnels on each side. The reason behind that is that I've spent a lot of hours in this boat. Just a little bit of reflection, you cop off them gunnels and the top side, it just eliminates that and it also stops the it stops it from becoming slippery when you've got a fish on. If I do need to get on the gunnel or, or move around like that, it just saves me from uh, you know slipping over and whatnot. So as you can probably see here, I have done the uh, whole splash well at the back there is all EVA foam. So when I'm fishing on the back a few times, I've been standing up on the side there and um, I've had to step back and uh, just to save slipping over, I found it was pretty slippery and dangerous. So I didn't want to break an ankle or something. So what I've done there is just eliminated that little slippery surface. And um, it also helps, you know, when I'm stalking big barra and that sort of thing, like a lot of people don't realize how important it is to be very, very silent in the boat, like dropping, things and that on the floor makes a bit of noise so just having that there is um just deadens a bit of the sound and as you can see this bit's torn off but i left a little flap there and i was running all my hooks of the lures that i'd used on that but um as you can see she's getting pretty worn so all this eva foam that you see i just bought from uh alibaba and i've installed it myself it was a uh, aliexpress job <laughs> i've got a lot of experience in surfboards i made surfboards for 10 years when i used to live down the gold coast and um yeah i just you know I, I know what the surfboard grip stuff is like and i did see all these expensive um cool like not going to say it's not cool but the eva foams and stuff like that that are getting around but um yeah i did this whole top side of this boat for under 150 bucks so just when you're doing it go onto the onto the website and just make sure you're getting a uh, 3m backing and then when you're going to install it what i did is i just flap a disc all the all the top side wiped it down with acetone kept it all nice and clean give it a rough surface so the so the 3m tape bonds really well and if you don't do that what you're going to have is you're going to have peeling issues it's going to peel up and you know once it gets a bit of water under it it'll never stick down the same so just give it a bit of a flap a disc and then i've just laid it all down wiped it down with acetone then laid it all out and then cut it all out and as you can see i sort of cut around i've stuck it all down and then i've just got the knife and i've cut around the edges and then what i did is i got a jet lighter and i've just burnt the edges of it just to sort of take away all the little rough bits and the burrs and whatnot so it's a nice neat job and it's a you know just a really handy little upgrade like i said you don't cop the reflection anymore if i do need to step on it i'm not scared i'm going to slip in the water and if i'm out fishing you know whether it's a a lure or a can of beer it's, it's nice and grippy and it's not going to slip off into the water for those who don't know the the hulls of stacer outlaw 429 yeah i've just clocked over 7,000 kilometers in this boat so it's done a few few <laughs> done a few good trips and um yeah a lot of coastal stuff a lot of bashing in the swell and also a lot of creek stuff running up sandbanks and hitting the odd rock bar and whatnot so it um yeah bit of a testament to the hull it has stood this test of time i guess you could say seven thousand kilometers in a boat is is a lot it's probably a lot more than what the average person's going to put in it so yeah like i said it's a bit of a testament to to the hull and what it can do i just find the ride with this thing is pretty damn impressive you know it's got that nice big flared hull that um pushes through the swell and pushes the water out of the way and it um yeah it just rides really nice so just all the stuff i do when i'm like running between coastal creeks and whatnot if the wind does pick up it just makes it a little bit more comfortable when i'm doing that sort of things now even though i've talked about it before i will run through it again this little anchor hatch at the front is one of the best little upgrades that i've done that is the um that was done by jared from jared's tinny mods and as you can see i've just done the uh eva foam over the center and i got this welded in by the guys at Svenson boats they do a pretty damn good job if you need any little mods done and whatnot so uh that's probably one of the best sort of upgrades i've done it's just freed up the whole front of the boat so i can you know snag bash and get up on the nose there and get over the top of me, me lure and whatnot so as you can see there's a big sander on the front there that's a 16 inch uh, garmin 84 16 it um yeah it is set up with the live and i've got that set up with the rod tech um the shaft 
that's just set up there on the nose it's pretty easy to hand handy to fold down i can fold it down flat onto the cast deck and then i'm running the pole dancer from rod tech as well down here i've got like just a little uh, g-fab mount there when i want to pack the pole away it's so simple all i do is tilt it back and then lock it into position here just like that which um yeah just keeps it all stowed away for traveling doesn't flop around it's not flopping down in the boat there so it's just a really handy use of space having it set up like that so as you can see pretty solid setup i did have a different pole before i do like this one a bit better it's just a little bit thinner and in the creeks and stuff that i'm fishing it's um it's important like you know just that bigger thicker pole that i had just created a bit more drag and it would just drag the pole underwater and it was really hold hard to keep it stable but still be able to maneuver it for the live function so um, that was a pretty good little upgrade just going to the the, the thinner diameter uh, pole there by rod tech um, i've had that on for about sort of six months roughly and um yeah no complaints at all so far the the shaft up on the front is fully fully adjustable i can lift that up higher but as you can see it's pretty like I'm standing in position now, it's pretty much in your face where you want it to be. So very handy for all the live sort of stuff. Now, I know a lot of people say that it's cheating and whatnot. It is not cheating. It is very hard still. It is a whole different set of skills in its own. So um, yeah, I've been really enjoying the live stuff lately and yeah, you're gonna see a lot more of it. Power in that, I've got a 100 amp hour Invicta lithium battery and it's, um, yeah, it's running on its own system. So it's got a 100 amp hour lithium battery and it runs the whole live system and i've also got another garmin 8416 down the back so two 16 inch screens she's a bit of a flash one this one and um yeah once i started looking at one 16 inch and i went back to the 12 it was just not enough it was very small and yeah i just really like the detail that you get off the bigger screen so i sort of lashed out and um yeah went for the two of them now like i said before the last sound i had many 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 kilometers on it i don't know even know how many hours it had on it so i you know I, i've used these for quite some time now they've got a fair bit of time under the belt and i do really rate the garmin uh coming from hummerbird before that i did really enjoy the hummerbird but just the versatility of the garmin and the and the live scope stuff is just game changer so yeah like i said i'm gonna i'm gonna be doing that a little bit more and um yeah you're gonna see a bit more of it so under this front front hatch here you can see i've got my gls 10 unit and underneath it's on a battery box it's mounted up it's um yeah basically a pretty simple setup i've got a dc to dc charger and it's isolated um that dc to dc can charge the min coder which has also got a 100 amp hour lithium and um yeah i can switch between which battery i want to charge if i'm doing a long run with the um isolator there so pretty handy little setup and i just got a little uh, victron charger at home that i just plug straight in so i don't need to take that off each time i need to charge it yeah nice simple setup and it's yeah been nice and easy i'm sorry this bit was an afterthought but i have modified the bowsprit a little bit and i've widened this up once again done by svensson just to marry it all in nicely but uh yeah these were originally about half the diameter so i've just widened it up just to get the footprint there to fit the ram mount also up the front i've got the 55 pound min coda been on the boat for a long time i've been using the 55 for a while i have found with the live that the um you know once i sort of go above sort of speed four or five the fish really start to spook so i am fishing a lot of shallow water stuff i would like to put an 80 pound on this boat but that's going to mean i'm going to need a 24 volt battery and everything so for the minute i've just got i'm going to stick with a 55 but yeah i might upgrade to the uh, 80 pound down the track just to try and keep that electric nice and low to just try not to spook any fish as i'm moving up on them with the scope so 55 is more than enough to whip this boat around in most conditions it's just when i'm punching into the into the current and into the wind i just want that bit more of a stealth approach so if i've got an 80 pound it's going to um you know i'll just be able to run a little bit lower so make a little bit less noise and creep up on the fish better so that's like i said running off a 100 amp hour lithium invicta battery as well and that one's set up underneath the esky there and it's got a little battery box built in down there for it so it's nice and handy out of the way really easy to charge i've got that one set up as well with a plug so yeah super easy to you know 
keep the batteries full and in good condition. So yeah, you would have seen in the middle here, I've got two bucket mounts. Um, I've just been running them and they sort of like fit into the boat sort of perfectly as you can see with the, you know, the Esky, it's all strapped in so it can't move and I can step on it and walk around it and same with the bucket mouse. They're not strapped in, but yeah, if I'm moving around the boat, it's, um, you know, just easy to have a big flat pot platform instead of having a fishing bag sitting there with all my tackle boxes and whatnot. So yeah, the bucket mouse just make it really easy to keep all your gear. If it rains, it doesn't get wet. I'll give you a quick look inside. You'll be able to see this one set up. This one's just all hard bodies. So I've got all them labeled there. Medium timber, jerk baits, small jerk baits, top water, deep, big deep timber, shallow, shallow timber, and small timber. So these are all just the 30, 20 size um, tackle box from Versus, and then they come with a little tray. Now this tray is out of a different box. Um, it does come with a bigger tray in the 9,000. This is the 9,000 size. So this is a little tray out of the 7,000. I've got a few of these because yeah, they're just so handy. Once I've got my first one, I've just, it's snowballed from there and I've got three now. So um, yeah, but like, I, like you can see, it's um, got a handy little tray up the top for all the stuff that I'm sort of been using or that's been in the mix or just when I'm tinkering while I'm on the water, I can quickly throw it out of the way. And the good thing is it just clips up like that. So if it rains, unlike a bag, it's not gonna fill up with water and you can put your phone and all that sort of stuff in the top. Now the top one here is a little bit different setup. This one is for all my soft plastics. So I know this isn't part of the boat, but it's part of what makes this whole boat set up so versatile. So this one, as you can see, it's a bit of a rat's nest in the top there at the moment, but I've got all jig heads and random stuff that I've got on the go. And then down the bottom, once again, 30, 20 size boxes for like my small baits, soft vibes, five and a half inch shads and Dr. Prawns, four to five inch shads, all my jig heads all sitting there, which is very handy. And that goes 1.0 through to 6.0, so it covers most of my creek, creek stuff. And then, yeah, small prawns and then big prawns. So. And then that is the big tray there that I was talking about that sits in there. That's the one the 9000 comes with. So there is a few different little size boxes that you can fit in this side. I just find having it really accessible like that so I can pull it out, grab what I need, and then get stuck into it um, without making too much noise and rummaging through stuff too much. Yeah, these, these things here I highly recommend them. And like I said, it's not part of the boat, but it's just something that, you know, makes the boat and the layout what it is. It's a very versatile um, tackle system, and if I do jump in someone else's boat, I can just grab either of these. I can switch the boxes out, so if I want to take barrel plastics, I can put them in here with the barrel hard bodies and eliminate all the other stuff in between. So, like I said, that's a 65 litre Yeti. It's strapped in, you can see it's strapped in on the side, just because these things aren't real stable when you're um, moving around the boat and whatnot. Yeah, it just sort of extends the cast deck. It is a different height and whatnot, but if you are dancing around up on the front there and fishing, you can definitely, you know, step on this stuff and not have to worry about going ass up. Very cool little setup, like you can see, it's it's pretty um, well designed. It would be nice to have a little bit higher floor and have all this under deck, but I like to have it out and accessible. So if I do need to change, it's not a mission to change because I find if it's packed away too, packed away too well I don't use it so yeah over the years I've mucked around a lot with trial and error on these side pockets I've always found them to be really messy but this setup's really good uh, what I've got there is just a couple of the uh, they're just nomad um, mesh bags so in there I've just got all the random bits and pieces that I need just um, spare hooks spare lures and whatnot in the packet and then in this back one here I've got all my leaders so um, all the leaders are always there in the boat for whenever I need them and it just keeps it really nice and neat if i do stop somewhere and have to run into the shops or whatever i can pull this stuff out and leave the side pockets empty just so it doesn't tempt anyone to poach anything but this is one of the really cool things that i've just sort of gotten onto that is a versus bucket mount stocker so um, i use that just to put all my lures that i've been using this is what i've been using over the last few weeks and um, yeah when i get home i can just wash that out it's got little drain holes in the bottom just give that a wash and I can put all my lures away when I'm not being lazy like I currently am. But um, as you can see, it's a mess, but it's a work in progress and that's always a work in progress. So up the front here, I've just got little bits and pieces, a couple of coolers, um, spare jig heads, some sunscreen, some wet wipes, we know what they're for. And then a um, couple, of, couple of bottles of Creek Cologne there and some sounder, sounder cleaner, so, and a leaf that doesn't need to be there. 
you would have noticed this little fella here, my mate Dave, he's got a 3D printer, he's just printed me up a little bracket. If you do want to um, get one of these, he sells them pretty cheap. You can um, hit him up. It's uh, Dinkum's World on Instagram, but yeah, that just pops in and out. So as you can see, it's nice and handy just to have it in place. And then I've got my little drink holder next door. And um, yeah, like I said, the side pockets have always been a bit of a um, nightmare for me. It's just always been a big cluttered mess. And um, yeah, it's only been pretty recent that I've sort of worked out the best sort of system. I think this is the best system, especially with this little fella here. I'll show you now. That little lip on the bottom just fits into that side pocket perfectly so it can't wobble and then yeah it can't fall out and when i want to get home it's so easy to get in and out i can just go and give it a wash and put it back into place as you can see there i've got the um 16 mounted at the back here on just a swing arm ram mount these are pretty much that's the best setup we are having the sounder up high um and cop and salt water spray to the back of it all the time just have it down nice and low it still gets a bit of salt water spray but it's not too bad so um yeah we got a really noisy little friend over here but that's all right down the back there it's still got me radio in the same place i barely ever use it i think i've used it once um just a little uh six panel a uh, six bay switch panel there i did drill out a hole in the floor this is something that, that um i saw online just because the the floor's sealed so well on these that when you know when you get a bit of water in and i have copped a wave over the nose once or twice so when you get a lot of water in the boat it takes a long time for it to drain off um just having that little butt drain hole there clears the deck a lot quicker and um yeah you know if i have to run the deck wash or whatever it clears the deck nice and quickly so very handy um just to have that little let that little drain hole there for the sake of just one little hole saw and then i just got the little drain from bunnings just helps to clear the deck in this little back pocket generally i just use this for rubbish but this is a live bait tank i don't really use it for a live bait tank um like i said it's just me rubbish bin but i've got a hose attached to the <laughs> to the inlet there and um yeah if i do need to hose the boat if it's copped a bit of bit of blood or whatever i can just um turn that on and it chugs out pretty well you stick your finger in the end and spray the whole boat out with it so very handy little um little thing if you're not using live baits so even if you are using live baits it's pretty easy to attach that that hose and then take it on and off and whatnot pretty much the rundown of what's what's in the boat as you can see very versatile setup you see me using it every week bloody nice boat to fish out of it's sort of you know i've had it for years now and it's only sort of been the last sort of 12 months i've felt like it's sort of getting to where i want it to be as you know there's always something with a boat they call them boats bring out another thousand and uh, i spent a few on this but yeah it's um yeah pretty pretty much you know as as good as i think i can get it for being a factory boat without being a full custom job i think it's um yeah probably one of the best on the market so yeah on the back i did get this thing re-rated for a 60 straight off the bat so the outboard's got about 600 hours on it now i'm doing about 200 hours a year um so yeah it's had a fair bit of abuse i did bend a prop shaft uh fishing the sooty comp a few years ago or last year i think it was actually but um yeah i bent the prop shaft pretty bad and um did some damage to the gearbox so uh i did use that opportunity to upgrade the gearbox to the 70 gearbox which turns a boat into like the high thrust 60. i can swing a bigger prop there as you can see it's got a pretty solid prop on there and um when i pull the boat out i will show you that sked guard setup but yeah, bigger, bigger gearbox, so I can swing a bigger prop and I'm getting a few extra Ks out of it. So yeah, when I'm cruising, I get about probably three Ks a litre. Three Ks a litre gives me a very big range. I've only got the little 25 litre red uh, fuel tanks that I've got in here, and it gives me about a 70 sort of kilometre range. So I've got plenty of um, plenty of range with the, the little 25 uh, litre tank. I would like to upgrade it to an underfloor tank, but being, you know, being three years old, and having done like 7,000 kilometers, I think it's about 6,900 kilometers since I've owned the hull. Uh, I don't know how much longer I will keep it. I'll probably trade her in and get a full custom boat. I've been chatting to the guys at Svensson and they're gonna make me something. We're just trying to sort of work out what sort of layout I'm gonna go with and how to incorporate it all. But yeah, just having the experience of setting this up, it's been, um, yeah, a bit of a learning curve and I've got a few ideas that I'm gonna put into the custom boat, but that won't be for another year or two. And I'm guessing by then I'll have around 10,000, eh, probably about, yeah, close to 10,000 Ks on it. So fingers crossed, I haven't had any cracks. I haven't had any yet, so I'm gonna touch some wood but um yeah it's been a very 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 good boat and it's done done its job very nicely so as you can see she's decked out exactly how i like it exactly for how i fish 
So yeah, that's the whole setup. Stowed away, electric, uh, the sound delay is flat up against the EVA, which helps keep it nice and protected. Just clears all that stuff and the poles put away. So if I'm not using it, I've still got plenty of room up on the cast deck. And then if I know I'm not gonna use it at all, I can just totally take this out by this, uh, removing the uh, uh, ram mount and then unhooking the cables and they all stow in under here. So if I am doing a bit of snag bashing, I can take it out. Um, not that I'm really gonna take it off anyway. I have been using it snag bashing. You might've seen that in the videos where I can just have it scanning in front of the boat as I'm cruising up the river. Sort of just gives you a little bit more insight into what's coming up. So if you see a snag, you can sort of hold back off it and work it properly before you sort of go over it and spook everything. So yeah, that's pretty much the inside layout of the boat. It's um, like I said, it's exactly set up how I want it. And uh, only way you could do something better is to get a full custom boat, which I will do down the track. But uh, I'm gonna go and put it up on the trailer. I'll give you a little run through on the trailer because I've got a couple of little handy things there that people always see at the ramp and go, geez, you got that dialed in and it's because of the setup. So I'll go the, over now and I'll put her on the trailer and give you a rundown of that. All right, so here's the trailer set up without the boat on it. As you can see, it's just the old school uh, C channel, just a budget pack um, C channel alloy trailer from Tellwater. I do have these self-centering rollers on them. I have had to modify them because I was chewing out the little soft ones on the end but um, basically these are spring loaded so as the boat rolls up on them it centers them for me puts it straight in the middle and then I just roll straight up on there the only problems I've had with this is that there I lost a pin so I just bent a jig head and put it in there which is uh gives it a bit of character but um yeah this has still got original springs and I've just done two sets of bearings on it so um, one of the cool things is this little boat catch so when I come up I flick that across when the boat comes in it catches it for me so um, the trailer set up really well the boat slides off it really easily so when I um, when I drive up this little uh, latch here catches it and then I can turn the motor off and then climb up and do it because I am launching and retrieving solo a lot so I'll give you a little look at what that looks like now So that's how easy it is to get it back in. That's the uh, gearbox there. You can see that big 70 gearbox. And this is a, I believe it's a Megaware or something like that branded Skeg Garden. As you can see, it is saved my Skeg pretty massively. It's got uh, just the two through bolts there that you just have to drill two holes and then stick it flex it on. And um, yeah, fast tail still on there. I've had that on there since I've owned the boat. That thing's bloody awesome. Put them on all my boats since I've had this one. Um, yeah, the formula's got two of them on the back with the 150s. As you can see, I use the boat properly and um, yeah, it cops a fair bit of abuse. A few, few ideas for you to all think about while you're, um, you know, when you're doing your own boats. But uh, yeah, like I said, the only way to get it really much better is to run a um, full custom boat. But one thing before I go, this is another little thing that I've added and that is a lecky leg from uh, Peter Agapuri Townsville. And um, yeah, very good idea and it just stops the head from flopping around and that all the time so while i'm here i'll give you a quick little tip this is just something that i do all the time i'll clamp this camera here so you can see what i'm doing generally i'll roll this electric head over the top of the bracket and lock it in and you can see this cable just locks on like that so just a little tip if um if you've got an electric it just it prolongs the life of your cables if you're on the water a lot even if you're not on the on the water a lot these things are expensive and just looking after them is as simple as rotating the head so so yeah that's it all packed away on the trailer ready to go i'm going to go home get the big boat ready we're heading out the reef tomorrow so yeah that's pretty much the run through plenty plenty of little upgrades and that but um yeah if you've got any questions hit me up in the comments i'm uh, more than happy to help it is you know it has been a long work in progress so there is plenty of tips here and plenty of ideas that i probably got that um yeah might be able to help you out but hope you've uh, enjoyed the video thanks for watching while you're here if you haven't done it make sure you hit that subscribe button peace